Hi and welcome here today. My name is Girgana Radovic. I'm a holistic health coach, sleep expert and EFT trainer as well as master TTAP trainer. I'm here today to talk more about why self-help is needed and, and what you can do to improve your own taking care of yourself. I'm living, I'm Bulgarian. I'm currently in Sofia, Bulgaria, and I'm so glad to be here today and speak with you. Please feel free to ask me questions, post opinions, and just ask what you need to know in order to improve your own self-help. So the biggest question for me right now today is whether self-help is really important and can we do wrong can we go wrong with self-help or what we can do to what can we do to improve our own uh, health happiness and ability to achieve more in life in our professional life and in our life in general so please feel free to post questions and state how you feel about the about this particular topic self-help is really um, the idea of self-help the um, notion of self-help is really growing nowadays we live in we live in a very fast moving world and we need sometimes we feel that we need to slow down and do better sometimes we feel exhausted most of the times nowadays and it's true for active fast moving people who'd like to achieve more who strive to achieve more on daily basis and who juggle with different uh, different tasks family professional life career self-help and all the rest that every one of us has in her or his own life so there are really two on as on my opinion as a practitioner as a coach um as person who help others get better i've seen two mainstream ideas so to speak and one says self-help is absolutely needed something that everyone should do on daily basis and the other contrast Con, uh, contrast um, opinion is that self-help is really nothing that you can I mean you don't need to do that at all because life is life and it's get sometimes it gets better sometimes it gets worse and you can't really do anything about that and that's not true there are many and the number is growing self-help books out there out there there are probably thousands if not millions of articles striving to help people get better feel better and live better but are those books and articles really important and should you read them should you apply what's written in those millions of letters on my opinion it depends on what you'd like to get in your life and how you'd like to move forward with what you are doing let me share a quick story here my own path to my own journey to self help started in a moment where i felt it was probably around 10 or 11 years ago where i was happy well not happy but i had everything that i had been wished for and i had family i had job i had job i had um interests 
I had friends, I was busy, and despite, despite all that, I didn't really uh, um, feel, felt happy, and I really didn't feel confident in, enough that that's what my life should look like. And Stasi, so nice to meet you here. Thank you for coming in and I hope you enjoy our talk today. So I found that I found the topic of self-help in a time when I was really mentally troubled, so to speak, because physically I had everything, but emotionally and mentally, I, it didn't feel like that. So I started looking for ways to improve my own feeling of self-worth and my own feeling of happiness. And that's what I see in many people when um, some of them my clients. Uh, what I see is that you start paying attention to self-help when you've tried you've had you've tried different other things and they didn't work on or when you don't see a clear way in front of you and you are kind of stuck in a place and you're not sure what you should do next so many people be become aware of the topic, topic of self-help whenever they need something meaningful or they need something that speaks louder to them than what's happening in their life at that very moment. And usually people, what I've seen so far, usually people start the start walking the walk to self-help with physical taking care of themselves. It includes uh, eating better. It includes exercising more or better. It includes, often it includes taking vitamins or other food supplements. Or the probably the most frequent first step on the self-help journey is taking physical health, uh, taking physical care of themselves. And that's wonderful, but it's not always enough. So let me get back on my own journey in hope that you recognize here something that speaks to you, is that Similar to those people that I just mentioned, I started my own self-help journey with looking for a way to exercise better and to exercise at home. It was 10 years ago. And then step by step, I learned more about eating right, about taking food supplements, about noticing my emotional state and taking steps to improve that emotional state, which led to improving relationships with others, transforming my life in general, and finally choosing a new professional path that led me right here today talking about self-help and in attempt to help others realize the importance of taking care of themselves and helping others achieve their issues at the moment or their serious sometimes but kind of forgotten problems so to speak. So why self-help is important? Because it's important because if you neglect yourself, 
you don't have the strength to move forward in in life either with your family life your kids your spouse or with your professional life or you don't have the ability the strength the motivation to achieve any goals or you don't even have any goals that's the probably the most important thing that moves us forward so if you enjoyed this talk so far please share it with your your friends and come ask questions that really are significant to you i'll be really happy to and glad to answer them and then let's go back on the self-help why it's important because it's you can't help others you can't be here for your kids for your spouse for your family for your friends if you are not strong enough internally i'm not talking here um specifically about physical strength although it's important but for me the more important thing in life is emotional strength emotional stability and this is the fountain of happiness and the fountain of strength in life 2020 at uh, 2020 and obviously 2021 are tough years to talk about but 2020 gave us a chance to really test where our emotional strength measures or 2020 was and i would say an experiment in a broader sense but it really tested how we our um survival skills it tested how we could find our way in absolutely uncertain times. What we can do in order to feel better, in order to move forward. And for me personally and professionally, 2020 gave me a really clear answer to the question, is self-help really needed? And the answer is yes. Because the people who not only survived but thrived during 2020 were those who previously had paid attention to their physical, emotional, mental state and had, had put effort to improve that strength and that condition and those were the people who thrived and not only survived but thrived during 2020 those are the people who will get up faster in 2021 and will move forward ahead of others and if you are not among those people fear not it's never too late to start and it's never too late to start paying attention to how you feel what you do and what you've you you like to achieve in life and why i don't necessary a necessary thing that self-help books are enough for for you to achieve to to help yourself they're important absolutely yes there are many helpful wonderful practical books and articles that you can read alone and start moving 
with your, forward with your life, start feeling better. But sometimes the self-help book, the self-help alone is not enough. If you find yourself in a really hard situation, if you find yourself in a situation that you're not sure what's next, you're not sure you have the strength to move on, then it's time to find somebody and ask for help. Probably in many other cases, though, self-help books are important and they are good and everybody should read them but as a person with <laughs> with many books you can see par uh, part of them behind me i know that reading alone is not enough and it doesn't really matter how great the book is how practical the book is what great notions are put in that book reading alone will not help you moving forward unless you choose to really use the knowledge and start applying it to your life so the answer are um, the answer to the question are self-help books good enough actually is yes but yes they are good enough most of the times when you when you need motivation when you need some practical steps when you need something to show you how to what to do next where to search for people uh, they are uh, absolutely good when you need ideas of what's done in the world and so on and Stasi, I'm very happy to hear that you um, enjoyed this so far and you agreed when you agree with me. And I know you're a person who reads a lot as well. And back to my to my answer of the question: Are the self help book needed and self help needed? The other uh, part of the answer is, but they are not enough, and you should start applying what you've read in those books and there is one more thing we are different as people we are different as human beings and same goes to the self-help books and sometimes even the best book is not appropriate for your condition or is not good for you right now at the moment or it's not interesting for you as well because what's written in the book and your opinion go in different ways so in that sense self-help books are you can't say this is the best book ever and everybody should read it yes but still and there is one other thing sometimes there is danger that we what we read in self-help books we can't really see how it fits in our own life we can't really apply the knowledge or we mistakenly apply the knowledge and sometimes there are really important conditions that we must pay attention to that we must consult specialists doctors other medical personnel or other coaches or practitioners and or um, people who are quali qualified to help us in this area and in such case the the book should always be the first step toward reaching others and looking for help and today this is my very first video here but i'm going to go deeper in this topic in this topic in um, future videos so 
stay with me and invite your friends as well. And back to the self-help, I would like to ask you a question. How, how important is self-help for you right now or in the moment there in your life? right now have you tried helping yourself out or you still are looking forward this possibility in the future i would like to see your comment in under the video and i'm sure will do my best to answer it either now during the live video or later in the comments and often Clients ask me here, okay, give me a book or give me ad an advice or tell me what I should do right now so I can release this problem within a matter of weeks. And sometimes it's appropriate to give them a book or an advice or a practice, but other times it's not that easy to see the transformation within a matter of weeks. And that's why we need to pay really focused attention and we need to move forward step by step by step by, by step every single day because self-help is not a magical pill it's not something that somebody applies to you it's not something that you dream of one night and then on the next day you start apply and get done with this self-help is really taking care of yourself every single day and in my practice, I've created my own system helping others and it includes three main columns. For me, those are the fundamental columns of emotional, physical and mental happiness and health. And those three pillars or columns, pillars, our first is the emotional balance. You need to look at your emotions. You need to understand better, understand more what's happening in your mind, in your self, in your body. You need to look back at, to look at those emotional states that you try uh, often subconsciously to cover because you don't want to deal with them. We all as human beings have those emotional traumas, big or small, and sure enough, we all can cope with them, sometimes alone, sometimes with the help of others other professionals so the first pillar is looking down looking at your emotions looking at your emotional health and trying to find a way to really improve that emotional health and to achieve emotional balance and that's a thing you can absolutely do within with a couple of minutes every day. That's why I in, like so much and promote so much emotional freedom techniques or EFT or, or simply called tapping because it can help you in a matter of minutes to get better, to, to deal with your emotions, release them and feel better. And then the second pillar that I really emphasize on is taking care of your sleep and if you like to 
be better with yourself and to if you like to start applying better self-help it's really good to look at your sleep your sleep pattern and to uh, to find a way to improve your own sleep on my opinion most of the active busy stressed overwhelmed adults at the moment can do something to improve their sleep or in other words most of the active hardworking people right now adults need some help with their sleep or need to pay better attention on their sleep and again it was true before 2020 and it's true it's more true right now because last year put a lot of pressure on our sleep as well and again if you are looking for a way to improve your health your condition you can start absolutely with improving your sleep and that's why it's such a huge part of my own practice and i emphasize on that to my clients that they should pay attention to their sleep and then the third pillow of course is the vitality the physical part of us as humans here we take care of our daily activity we take care of what we eat what we take as supplements and so on so here you have three really distinct ways that you can start if you'd like to improve your on taking care of yourself or your self-help and it doesn't really matter where you you start from it met what matters only is to start you can start with emotional balance you can start with sleep you can start in with physical at physical level and it's going to it's going to pay well for that i mean you're going to get benefits and of course you can't really do only one thing for a long period of time and expect great results because we need all those three pillars within our lives on daily basis and i usually suggest to my clients and people who ask for help to start slow start with something that appeals most to them at this very moment and after a couple of weeks or a month they start adding something else and then they start doing those two things for a longer period of time and then they start adding something else as well after a certain period of time. Stasi, I'm glad to hear you sleep eight hours. It's so wonderful that you take care of your sleep. And um, it's often considered that we need to sleep eight hours. And it, while it's true for probably most of the people, it's not true for the rest of us. So some people need eight hours, other need six hours, um, other need nine hours. The most important thing here is to find your own sleep need and satisfy your own sleep need not mine not stasis not somebody else so that's why it's really important when you start looking 
into ways to improve yourself, to help yourself, to really start from the position of knowing yourself, knowing what you need. Maybe you need vegetarian diet. That's fine. Maybe you are not feeling well with vegetarian diet. That's fine as well. Maybe you need eight hours of sleep. Or maybe you need an hour of walk every day. That's fine. Find what fine. F go find what works best for you. For example, I need around seven and a half hours of sleep. I rarely sleep more. And unfortunately, some I sometimes sleep less. But if I'd like to be my absolute best, I would probably need around seven hours and a half. And I found that years ago. And whenever I need to be, and now I know that whenever I need to be <laughs> mentally sharp, I need to stay focused, I need to give a lecture, I need my seven and a half hours of sleep. And I encourage you to go find your own needs. Self-help is a big word. Self-help is a mouthful, actually, word. But it doesn't need to be scary. It doesn't need to be some funky way of saying I enjoy myself. Self-help should be really practical and can be really practical. It can st start with sleep, with adding a few minutes of tapping or EFT during uh, to, to your day. It can uh, mean having probably maybe just one at the beginning, but really healthy meal per day or even having breakfast if you are not a person who usually does breakfast. So that's what, that, that is what self-help is really for me. And that's what I teach my clients. And if you'd like this video so far, make sure you come back tomorrow when we will continue with the topic of exploring ourself, ourselves and exploring the ways to transform our lives, health and happiness. I'm Girgana Radovic. I was, I'm very happy that we spent the time together today. So thank you and see you next time. Bye bye.